I don't know if you can tell from my excitement um, what was happening. Stay. Calmly walk. Blah, you know, blah. can't even talk. And you are going to... Oh, come on. Shit! Hi everyone, here we are, episode six. How did this happen? Who let me do this? Is this going anywhere? <laughs> Don't I need a certificate or something to do this? Anyhow, okay, so we're getting close. We got derailed a little bit on the last video, but we really have only got a few more things to get done to get the analog cage to talk to the digital cage. So I'll be installing the ribbon cable that goes from the CMI 133 card to the analog cage. I'll be installing the IDC headers for the CMI 32 connection. That's the one that allows the digital cage to control the cards on the analog side. Uh, and I'll need to make a ribbon cable for that to do. Um, also, the CMI28 has some needs. I'm gonna have to figure out what they are and figure that all out. And then we switch it back on. I guess that's the goal. But first, uh, the first thing I need to really attack is uh, the channel cards on the digital side. There's a bunch of ribbon cables that go from there to the analog side. And those are looking a little bit frayed and a bit worse for wear. So let's just have a look at those first. So the channel card ribbon connector, that's all kind of nasty. So let's just swap it out. I've got the nice multicolored ribbon cable. We may as well do it nice. So it is the red one at the bottom and it's facing out. I wish I could use these labels. Maybe I can. Yeah, I can. I can wrap the label or no, I can't. What's up to be? At every opportunity, I'm wanting to reuse the existing machine or any parts from it. And so even the labels here that identify the different channel cards, I wanted to use those too. I'll, I'll take that label off of there. That's what I'll do. nasty zoink it's all kind of brittle as you can see it's been a lot of pressure has been put on a lot of the cable in there and it feels old too what i want to do is somehow get this sticker from here and make sure all righty i managed to disconnect it from the thing now just flatten it back like that boom look at the ribbon cable all glorious and and much more colorful than the other ones okay so it's backwards who cares? It's all good. All right, that wasn't so bad. Okay, now I just need to get the IDC socket and mount that on the analog motherboard. Then make the ribbon cable. This is the last connector. The, the, the IDC connector is arriving today. Parts of this were obviously assembled or pre-assembled and they already had um, CMI parts, but in this particular situation, they, uh, they just trimmed off the cable. So I think they probably pre-assembled this and then cut off the cables that aren't needed for, for CMI-ness. Again, they're all facing one way. They've all got the red on the left. And this one is a 37 pin. And this is the one that says, I think it was data control or something. Is that one? No, data control. And that's the one that comes through and goes to this empty socket here, which I have here and a connector here. So now I need to, um, feed this through, make the ribbon cable the right length to get to here, and then um, I guess also I need to check to see where pin one is, because it seems to be that it's not always exactly the right way around on this. So I know that I've got to have to go from here roughly to there. And don't need much. Down. Okay, from reading this, it looks like I can see written on down here is 33 and 34. You can't see what's this down in there. So this means this is pin one. Now looking at the pictures, it shows that pin one is at the top. So I'm gonna wrap this around and do it nicely with the securing thing, the, the strain relief. And then I'm gonna take the socket, I'm gonna solder it onto the side of this board here, to this side. All right, let's do it.
I realize now that seeing as I'm here, I need to add this 10 pin one. Doot. And then also the other one, there's another one for sampler or something right here for the power supply for metronome and stuff. Um, I've got to do all that too. So let's get on with it. Okay, so the learnings continue. This is what I would consider just a normal IDC, um, you know, connector that's lockable. With the things that go out there and everything's fine. Here's a 10 pin version of that. And I guess I've just not got enough knowledge in this area, but this is 10 pin and this is a, a 10 pin thingy. And will it go in? No. You need one that's for a lockable one of this exact same type. Um, this is too wide. So what I had to do on the other one is um, remove the lockable part and then drill it out and make it bigger, which is a massive pain in the balls. Um, it does make it lockable, which is good. Um, I just, these took forever to arrive in the first place. Um, they came from the UK. And so, um, I guess, I mean, I could just delve in and try and find the right kind. Or I could, I'll try and file this one out. I, I, I'm getting some of these ones. There are, these ones are already arriving tomorrow. They're, you know, they're cheap and all. Um, they're just not lockable. But this one here, I'm not going to be able to get for, for a month. So I'm going to um, just take out the lockable parts and do the same thing I did the other day. Just take out all the bits so I can get the socket in there. Ah, pain. another one of those screws. All right, so now I have a full complement back panel that's properly wired and goes to destinations that I believe are correct. Okay, we're now in a place where it looks like we can put it all back together. What could possibly go wrong? I have complete faith. Come on. Get in there. So this is a bit weird. It seems to be pushing back. And I don't know if it's normal to have like power connectors shoving up against data connectors. You know, these power connectors are like got 30 amps of them at five volts. And they're pushing up against these tiny little pins that could be penetrating through and give a not nasty, you know, shock to the system. I don't want that to be happening. So a bit frustrating, but we'll get there. Cables directly against data cables. Right, it's now a box once again. Oh. <sighs> okay. Um, I now. I'm at a place where I'm going to connect up the channel cards, connect the 31, the CMI 31 cards up, plug things in, plug all the cables in, plug the CMI 32 cable in, power up the machine. Wow. Freaking out a little bit. All right. What I also need to do is, um, go pick a couple of CMI 40, uh, 331 cards and put them in there. Now, all of these cards, they've all been stored in polystyrene. And I know that they're apparently very sensitive with static. So I don't know how, uh, how this is gonna be. Um, and I've really been careful, um, but a lot of them have crap, you know, potentiometers hang off them. Some of them, a couple of them have got 
card's uh, potential meter is missing, which I found in the box. So this part is going to add some more variables to this situation. And uh, we're just going to have to see what we get. We, we have to just try it. These cards might be totally damaged. I have no idea. All I can do is just uh, have faith. Power this up one more time, see if everything's good, and I'm going to go and get my laptop. So far, so good. Right, laptop. Let's boot up. Yes, that's going to be my next internet search. Okay, it was giving me a semaphore error, uh, but what I did was just loaded a voice and then loaded RS and then got it to play something, so which is doing right now. So, good thing is RS works, right, for a kickoff, and then it's playing, and then I look at the channel card. Now, that shows that um, there is one voice being played right there. And you would think that it being doing that, it would be that at the end you'd it'd be going on and off. So maybe something's crashed. But what I need to do now is connect um, an XLR to from there out to something. Jeez, I need, I need to get things connected now. All right, let's do it. It could very well be that it's actually making a noise right now and we just don't know it. So I have to get this um, and get it into this and I need a what's this? Where does this go? What is this? And you are the Oh come on. Now just dumped this plug into my coffee. Can you believe it? You're gonna be okay. It'll just be a little bit caffeinated. Hopefully not shorting it out. Stay Calmly walk. Something is happening. Maybe it's crashed. Who knows? <laughs> Shit! It's working! <laughs> yes! Alright. Uh, what? It's working! <laughs> Your beauty! Uh, we have audio! That is crazy! Alright! <laughs> Holy crap, you you live! Alright, we are in a very good place right now. Okay? <laughs> okay, computer, now I need you to stop. Come on. Now it won't recognize me. I need to see my face. Hi. There we go. Now, whoops! Whoa, I am super excited. Then I need to go, um, ST. Boom! We have success! <laughs> oh man, I gotta call Steve and Peter and Andre, everyone! Everyone must know. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell from my excitement um, what was happening there, but it's working. Now, I've got one chart channel going right now and I've got one voice loaded. So I'm gonna load in another voice and then um, see if two channel, you know, the, can't even talk. I really should move the keyboard over here, shouldn't I? Voice load, and bass, bass cello. Yeah, so I'm gonna load that in to the second voice. All right, and now we should see both dots going on here that have done that. So if I go to uh, RS now, now it's got both, so you should hear something coming out the second one. 
PL10. Yes. I'm seeing both of them light up now. No. Channels working one card, so that shows. So what that shows is the um, the CMI 32 cards working, the CMI 31 cards working, the ribbon cables working, the connection through the all the way through the back, and the analog cage is working, and the output card is working. Boom! I actually need more notes in there, and I don't have keep. The next thing would be is to plug in MIDI. MIDI keyboard check. MIDI in, installed, cable, eh. Eh. doing things with one hand, in stop, plugged in, one cable, that, everything's good, let's do it. Right, do nothing, trip over, nothing, powering on, oh, see my face, all right. Voice load, bass cello, bunk. Oops. Clear. Voice load, bunk. All right. Hear it loading. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> working and um, pitch bend We are in an amazing place. What amazing progress. This machine is actually making notes and sounds that it's, it has never done before. It's the first time that those cards and all of those things have actually worked in that fashion. So that's massive. It is alive. <laughs> but we've still got a lot to do. First of all, we've got to put the whole thing back together because right now it is just a bunch of parts splayed all over a table. That's not good. There's a bunch of stuff that I'm really just not familiar with, with the, the rails and all of that stuff. And then I don't have a keyboard. I need to find a proper keyboard, either getting the MFX thing working via the uh, 354 card or maybe the um, USB to CMI uh, connection thingamajig. I need to figure that one out. So th that's that. And then also, mouse. I don't have a mouse. What? Can't do anything. With, well, there's some things you just can't do without the mouse. So there's that to do. And then um, there's a bit of an open wound at the front there. I need to build something that will actually um, have a front plate to make the front look complete. This is kind of a cosmetic thing, but also a cooling thing. It doesn't have a front face. It's got to have a face. <laughs> can't just be like that. Like Anyway, it's got to be dignified. And then we can worry, you know, worry about the other things. Um, uh, like getting the rack mount put together, getting it installed, and then, you know, I've got to calibrate the whole thing too. So, there's still a lot to be done. We'll see you in the next one. Wow, 88 megabytes. This one's a winner. Uh, here. Okay. Yeah. All right.